Welcome to the National Real Estate Network video training program. This video is part of a series designed to help beginning and experienced real estate investors with the different aspects of purchasing and investing in properties. Be sure to click the link in the description to purchase the full length version or become a member at 27 monthly meetup.com. Maureen and I want to create a business out of selling the picks and shovels for the people going to the gold rush. The investors that are going to buy properties. But I'm really committed to doing that where I'm giving incredible value at the lowest possible dollar compared to somebody paying fifty thousand dollars. So I pay in tons of business success and tons of business failure. So I, in my career at one point I ran Ten service state. I was an oil company rep. So I had ten service stations. Uh, I told for five different police departments. I owned the junkyard, the salvage yard, uh, and I bought and sold over thirty-five hundred properties. So inside all that, inside the real estate world of that, uh, I didn't do all that simultaneous. Some of it, like. I had all those stations and bought 26 houses in six months when we first got into the business. But so I'm like somebody that does likes to spin a lot of plates. So what I'm going to show you today is a business that you can spin a lot of plates, but if the plate falls off, it doesn't hurt you. And today what I'm doing is I'm an internet marketer and I get business locations throughout the year, all 50 states. And it generates me money. The only difference is I don't have toilets or tenants, and I don't have cost. And I get I generate money from that. I, I generate really good money off of it. It's a really good business. So we're going to look at this business from a similar standpoint, like how you can do this business and not not have the overhead and have the risk and put the risk on other people. So that's what today's all about. Um, so I have one request. If I give you an incredible value today that you can spread the word about this is a really good thing for other, to other people and get them to sign up because what we created is a, a site called 27 Monthly Meetup. So everything we do gets recorded. So like this is a training tape. Every one of them are like a training tape. We're doing a whole lot more workshops where we're doing training. Like if you want to write a buyer favorable purchase agreement, we've got a seminar on how to do that. We've got all kinds of stuff. So, like I said, when I exited out of my rental properties, 350 of them, I used least options with my primary form of getting out of that. And that's what the thing's going to be about. So, if you're a realtor, you can use exactly what I'm telling you about to be able to to create listings uh, and to also represent buyers buying, okay, and maintain control of them. If you're a realtor or if you're an investor, it's an excellent way to put tenants at risk, make more money, not be responsible for the maintenance. There's tons of advantages to that and make sure your deals go through. If you're an agent and you're dealing with investors, then they will follow you around because of what you're Bill Sevens. Todd's dad, uh, uh, Alex. <laughs> Alex's dad, Todd, has, uh, I'll be all right. I'm only good for a few more years. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, he's got, and, and this is exactly what I had. I had, like, not to the level he's got, but I, I had 350 rental properties. I had rehab crews. I had about 10 rehab crews working simultaneously. I always had 10 houses under rehab. So with that, you've got all this stuff going on and, when, and anybody that's in that kind of business would be a liar if they didn't tell you they aren't having a tragedy along the way. Major costs, major problems that are beating them up alive. This business could be the exact same thing but without any of that, okay? Because all those investors at Renegade and all those investment clubs they need a person that can bring them a deal, a buyer for their property and put them at risk. So like the skill I'm going to teach you today is in high demand. Um, who was it that works here? Uh, oh, Lauren. 
more to the <coughs> last renegade means is I have I work directly for Section Eight. I have Section Eight tenants. I thought they were going to mob her trying to get out of the place. So yeah. that's exactly. The so if you want that kind of activity, you can get. So, um, so oh, a couple of disclaimers. I give this all the time. Real estate can be risky. Sometimes you win. Sometimes you lose. Uh, it's always easy to talk to a CPA or an accountant. What I'm showing you today of lease options is actually not legal in some states. So that's why you need to talk. Talk always check where you're at to make sure we're working with these elements ready. Second disclaimer is everything I tell you is a lie. If you like it, try it on and so you go to some exam and see. Gold. So this is your goal as one well looking at some business. You want to show a landlord how to get more than a month and a half security deposit. So if you can get that for your rental properties, you can be happy, right? Uh, we're going to show you the ABCs of options. You're going to understand exactly what an option is, what it goes on. And we're going to send everybody in the room this PowerPoint before the day's out, too. So if you want to, you don't need to shoot pictures if you don't want to, but we'll give it to you before the, before the day. Well, before tomorrow's schedule. Or if you join one seven and up, you could. Yeah, you can re watch this. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so if you've got a property that is a real estate agent that's difficult to sell, or is the owner wants more than above market prices for it, this is a great way to to find the right buyer for that. So I'm going to walk through and all kinds of scenarios we're going to talk about. And then it's also geared to make the tenant happy, you know. To, Believe it or not, even though they're paying more, you're giving them value. You explain that. Uh, you're also going to work on a lot of tenants restoring their credit for them, uh, finding a buyer before before you buy a property. So if you are an existing investor, doesn't it make more sense if you've already got the exit strategy in your hand, or you've got somebody who's got the exit strategy already in hand before you ever buy the property, and you also know where the the buyer is. Like he's willing to take something. You show him a few houses that have been hotel. This is what it looks like here. This is what it looks like after it's done. So he is prepared mentally to be able to be the buyer for that property. So um, uh, and then like me, I had to exit the property, so I got out of them. When I first started getting out with an option agreement, it wasn't the same option that I did. I'm going to show you today. It was a much tougher one to get to get it to happen. Uh, and I'm going to show you how you can find somebody that's in foreclosure and turn around and option that property out to somebody else if they do it off to you. Todd gets a ton of those. So, Today's agenda, we are, I talked about this a little bit, actually, yeah. Uh, success with rent options, what is an option? We're going to cover what you need to do to create a binding option so that the tenant is actually locked into something. We're going to talk about what a unilateral agreement is. We're going to talk about who the parties are of an option. Uh, we're going to talk about buyer favorable options versus seller favorable. Today's course is on seller favorable. How to find a tenant that, uh, that's uh, willing to buy? Where to advertise for that? Uh, then we're going to talk about how you, why you've got to have a mortgage uh, broker or loan officer. He's like absolutely key to this business. If you don't have one, more you can. Then we're going to walk you through a lease option. You're going to give you all the forms and we'll give them to you in a Word document so you can change the forms if you need to. Uh, I'm going to give you everything you need to do this business. Um, <coughs> so what an option is, it's an exclusive right and privilege to buy a property at a certain price and terms at some time in the future. So as
as an investor, if you, I'm just going to give you some examples how you can use an option. As an investor, if I went along M59 and I found prime real estate, and I know M59 is like expanding out and there's all kinds of growth, and I went to the owner of that property and I said, I'd like to option this property. I'm going to give you $500 and I'm willing to pay price and terms. So he gives me price and terms agreement, okay? And we sign an option agreement, I give him $500. I've got a year to buy that property, right? And then I've got the right in my option to extend it out another year or extend it out another two years for another 500. But I know that the property values are going like crazy there. So now somebody else comes along and offers in cash that's a little bit less than what I offer. Does he have an issue? Yeah, he has a huge issue because I've got a binding agreement with him. So, do you see how you could use an option to lock up stuff to move them up in, in major areas? Now, he's got to buy me out of that situation. So that, the reason I'm saying that is because when you do an option with a tenant, they're in the exact same position with you. When property values escalate, you're locked in to sell them that property at an exact price and terms deal. Do you follow that? So, but if you've got a hundred real estate properties and you've been around the market long enough, that's not an issue with you that jumps a few thousand, right? right. You've got something locked in and you're not having issues with your property. So, um, so one party accepts the right to purchase something at a later date. Uh, certain price and terms. Uh, so in order to get an option, you have to give somebody some type of consideration. So if I enter an option agreement with uh, Maureen and I give her a you know, pig as my option consideration, that will work. I can give her a dog, I can give her my spare tire, I can give her cash. You have to have some form of consideration. I could give her a note that says I'm going to pay her X amount of money. That's consideration. I give her one dollar. I've got an option. So I've used options where I have a motivated seller and I have no idea whatsoever how I can get rid of that property. I don't have a clue. But it's worth, I'm there, so I might as well hand them a dollar and enter an option agreement with them for five years, now I'm controlling that property, right? What counts in real estate is control. You got the contract, you got control. And, the, and your contract, is you're going to be able to record stuff against the property. That's why when we're doing a rent to own with the tenant, we're going to make sure that it's not recorded. So we're going to cover that to before the day. But is there a time limit that you mentioned? Uh, I think they're, they're actually, they can't run them indefinitely, so you have to have a time limit with them. So that's like, but it's going to be what you can negotiate. Okay. So it might be for, if the guys that don't want it ready to walk away, he'll give you a five year period that they get right to extend it another five years. I had a property that was located across from the church. At the time, it didn't occur to me, I optioned the property. Church ever got back up on its feet and needed additional parking, it would be a perfect scenario. So that would be a possibility. So, and, there, and there's two kinds of options from, from my perspective. I have a buyer favorable option agreement and a seller favorable option agreement. They're totally different. So we'll, we'll do that one on another day. And I don't like doing them at the same time. So it confuses people. Okay. Uh, so you need, in order for an option agreement to be binding, you need these ingredients. You need competent part, uh, parties. A competent party means that, uh, that uh, they're of legal age, they're not mentally or emotionally or physically incompetent. I had a tenant rent a property from me one time, uh, pulled up with a golf cart. Me. I didn't question why he drove there with a the golf cart. I had a rental agreement, he paid me rent for two years, and then I, I had to evict him. 
that he had a rent on with me too. So I did the eviction. When I entered into the courtroom, I had this uh, attorney there representing him for the Association of Mentally Retarded People. I got the property back about two and a half years later. They were like just clobbered. So I need to make sure. The reason they wrote a golf cart was because if he had a seizure, he split him off the pedal and the golf cart would stop, which I didn't know at the time. So, but the guy was not stupid. I mean, he was a really smart guy. Anyway, you need to make sure you got a competent party. So if you had somebody that had Alzheimer's, not a competent party. No. So you have to have consideration. That could be money, that could be that pig, that could be the used tire, that could be a note in order to make the option buy. It has to have the lawful objective. So if my lawful objective for giving somebody a rent to own is a percentage of the gross on the drug house, that's not a lawful objective. You follow that? You gotta have you know, one more time. I think it has to be a law. We have to be following the laws. So if I was doing a rent to own with you, and I was renting you the property for a percentage of the gross of the drugs that you were selling, oh, I see. Yeah. 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 that would not be a lawful objective. You know. yeah. I think it's a lawful I work with Detroit a lot, so I'm not going to keep my eyes So you have to <laughs> offer delivery and acceptance. So you have to. First off, you're giving somebody an option. It's a unilateral agreement. So you're giving that, when we're talking about rent to own today, you're giving that tenant the right to purchase that property at a certain price and terms. They're not obligated to buy the property. But when you're doing an agreement, you've got to make sure that there's an offer delivery and acceptance. So I'm going to have a sign it to make sure that that's achieved. Uh, then um, it's a mutual agreement or meeting of the minds. So you gotta have to make sure you got a meeting of the minds. I understand offer and acceptance with delivery. You're gonna leave with the paperwork so you're gonna hand it to you. Okay. If in Michigan it's legal to sign an option agreement on Proper legal form, but the state's going to decide what that is. Everybody follow? Interrupt me if you got questions. So, so, unilateral agreement means I'm giving you the privilege to buy, and you're not obligated to buy, but I'm obligated to sell. So, it's a one sided agreement. So, then you say, well, I'm going to give this tenant this right to buy, they can mess me up if I'm selling to another investor, right? So you got to make sure that that tenant's at risk. So that's how we're going to do it is inside the option consideration. So like if you're running an ad to rent to a tenant or a rent to own, how many guys think that they're going to have, and let's say it's Todd's dad's or Todd's house and he's got uh, totally rehab, and he wants he would like to get 20% down, it's $100,000 property. So he wants $20,000 down. What do you think the odds are of finding a tenant that's going to just go, oh, here's 20000 option consideration? Not going to happen. So they're going to have the first, first of all, you're going to get whatever the market rent is. If the market rent on that house is seven fifty, you're going to get seven fifty. Then they're going to then the house down it's rehabbed and everything and you're representing Todd so you're going to say look he needs to get minimally 20% down so it's 20,000 you've got an extra 2,500 you get the first month's rent 2,500 I think I can talk him into taking a note that's why the mortgage broker becomes really key because they're going to qualify that tenant for what he can actually pay so the mortgage brokers already tell you that you can pay an extra 200 So now you're going to get a note as part of that option consideration. The option consideration is non-refundable. So they owe that note. So now that tenant's at risk for 
they've got all these issues that they think will kill the sale. In reality, a lot of times that's not the case. They already qualify for a mortgage. Now, how the second you they find out you're going to take them to your mortgage guy, and but your mortgage guy has to understand one rule with you, right? He has to understand that he's not going to tell them that they qualify for an FHA. He can go get them home anyway. He's going to tell them you're lucky you're working with Eddie because Eddie's seller will pay all the allowable sellers will pay all the allowable closing costs, so you don't have to come up with that money. Eddie's sellers will pay any kind of substance program they'll give you to be able to put the mortgage together. There's a bunch of those out there for first time buyers. So you want to lock them in that you're the guy that's going to match them up with a program. And you're going to get a house that's at a fair deal because it has to appraise. You know? So does that make sense to everybody? I, I have another question for the maintenance. Um, so going through my research, um, I spoke with a attorney and he said if I do, if I include the maintenance, then that automatically puts me into a land contract with the tenants. If I include that they have, that they're responsible for I the maintenance. I think you talk to them real estate. Okay. And I think that on a lease in the state of Michigan, that, that the, if you enter a lease that's over a year, you don't have to do the maintenance. My objective to the form I gave you is I'm not going to try to get out of the maintenance. I'm going to say if you don't have the money, like let's say the furnace goes out, you don't have the money to put the furnace in, I'm going to put it in. But the cost of that furnace is going to get added to the purchase price and down payment. You follow? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm working with a client right now that's looking to order rental. So he's asking me to help negotiate prices lower. So he was asking me, can you negotiate the one and a half months to a month? He's the exact comment or no? He's telling me no. And I was like, that makes sense. Why is it why is it lying to the property and pay the price? Yeah. So most investors are not gonna be as an agent of the person that's got the house. I was pricing my houses at market price. I had another friend of mine that was selling his houses above and doing options. None of his deals closed. I wanted to get out of the business. I wanted to sell my property and be done on it. So at that point, I didn't know how to put the tenants at risk when I first started. I would say if you pay an extra hundred dollars a month, I would match it with a hundred and get you out. What I'm showing you is how to lock them in and really make it work. So, and so I'm saying you want to establish whatever the market price is. I do. You can do an option for a year. At the end of the year, you have the right to extend that. You can increase your option money. You can change the price. You can do whatever you wanted to. Uh, if your objective is to get out of the hundred properties at a real fair price, then this is an excellent. Way to Your objective, your objective is to find people who actually qualify for a mortgage. Now you've got a real estate license, and even though they're going to work with you exclusively, you can still take them wherever you want to take them, right? Once you, it's your decision. Do you follow that? So now you're lining up all these different people. And Alex, in your case, you've got them coming in and giving them a positive here, filling out an application. And 
now look at the mortgage person that Maureen's providing you that understands that he's not going to, you know, do this, try to move him around yeah. you. So. And remember, when you're working with someone in the mortgage, be a loan officer or broker, you're also uh, giving them a pipeline of potential business because you're going to come across buyers who qualify now, buyers who qualify in six months, buyers who qualify in nine months to a year, and so that is business that's going to come back to them because if it's somebody that needs a little help bringing up their credit, they're going to tell them what they need to do in order to be qualified in a certain amount of time, and then they'll come back and they'll write that loan. So you're generating a pipeline of business for yourself as well as that loan officer. So it's a reciprocating relationship between the two. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, the real estate gets commissions get decided it's between you and the customer. It doesn't vary. But like on the ones you're doing right now, uh, three, three, three. Yeah. So, but if you were doing a rent to own, you, you're going to get paid for the rental. And you're going to get paid for the sale. So if they're, if, if, if I'm negotiating with uh, your dad, where we're going to start is I'm going to get, uh, I'm bringing you this deal and they're going to pay an extra 2500 And dad, that's my money because it's 100% towards the commissions. That'll, then you can get negotiated back to 50%. You know? So how the, that makes sense. So. Okay. So we need. So this is the hugest mistake made in rent to homes. If you go on the internet and start looking for them, they're going to give you here's your rental agreement, here's your option agreement, and here's everything combined into one agreement. You can't do that. I'm, I'm telling you. The way to do it is your real agreement stands on its own by itself. So you can get a really good rental agreement if you join the 27 monthly meetup. We had a Michigan attorney put together a really binding uh, real estate agreement. The one that, uh, that we're giving you is a really good agreement looked at by a bunch of different attorneys and questioned over time. Uh, but you get the rental agreement. So what you're doing is you're renting the property, whatever the market rates are. That's separate. So the reason we're doing that is if you have to evict the tenant for non-payment of rent, you can do it and not have a problem. So now we've got so we've got the rental agreement that they've signed and stands on its own. But what we're not going to do is get deposit. Why do we not want a real estate deposit? Yeah, because what happens with option consideration? Not refundable, you keep it. What happens with deposit? Give it back. Give it back. So all I want to do is make sure they got the market rent. Let's say it's a thousand dollars, and they got a total five thousand dollars. I want the other four thousand as option consideration. Does everybody follow that? Non-refundable option consideration that gets applied towards the purchase price. That makes sense. Okay. But now the rental agreement stands on its own. So then we're going to enter an option agreement. Um, and the option agreement, I'm, just, I'm going to go through this in great detail with you. That's the total option agreement, one page. Okay. And then I'm going to enter a purchase agreement. And that's going to be separate. Okay. And when the purchase agreement is going to be initialed by both parties, right? Why is it initial and not signed? If I execute the purchase agreement, I no longer have an option. Everybody with me? Okay. So now, what I think I would do is have him sign the purchase agreement, and I'm going to initial. I don't have to change it. They're going to have a promissory note, which is separate. All this stuff separate. Promissory note.
By clicking the link in the description below, you can purchase the full version of this video in all the forms mentioned within, for only $7.99. Or, if you like, you can get access to all of our real estate investing videos at 27monthlymeetup.com. The cost is only $27 a month, and includes all past meetings, 3 new meetings a month, plus all the forms mentioned. Thanks for watching.